Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Environment and Planning Committee meeting. I declare the meeting open at 7 p.m. Acknowledgement of country. I'd like to acknowledge the physical people of the Eora Nation who are the traditional custodians of all lands, waters and sky in the Georgia River area. I pay my respects to elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who live, work and meet on these lands. Um, there are no apologies tonight. And there's been no request to attend the meeting via audiovisual link. Notice of live streaming of committee meeting. Staff and public are reminded that this meeting is being recorded for minute taking purposes and is also being broadcast live to the public on Council's website in accordance with Section 5 of Council's Code of Meeting Practice. The recording will be made available on Council's website. Code of Meeting Practice. The order of business is shown in the agenda which has been made available. Staff and public are reminded that this meeting is open. Doors to the meeting room are to be left open unless the meeting moves into a closed confidential session, according to section 14 of the Code of Meeting Practice. Only if the meeting moves into a closed confidential session will the public broadcasting of the meeting be suspended. Council's Code of Meeting Practice prohibits the electronic recording of meetings without the express permission of Council. Mobile phones must be turned to silent during the meeting. Disclosures of interest. Do any councillors have any interest to declare? Okay, thank you. There are no, disclo no disclosures of interest. Um, and there's no speakers at the public forum tonight. So the first item is um, confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, ENV 01524, confirmation of the minutes of the Environment and Planning Committee meeting held on 11th March 2024. Can I call for a mover and a seconder, please? Move by Councillor Wang. Second by Councillor Ball. Thank you. I'll declare that motion carried. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, can I um, can we go in the room, please? For those uh, to accept those minutes. Your vote, please, Madam ne uh, Deputy Mayor. Four. Cool. Mr Chair. Four. Councillor Amber Taper. Four. Four. Councillor Jamison. Four. Councillor Catrice. Four. Councillor Lansbury. Four. Councillor Wang. Four. 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 motion carried. Thank you. The next item is ENV 01624 committee report. It's draft principal certify complaints policy 2024. Um, and uh, before we move, call, have any discussion on this, um, I'll get um, Ms. Hosking, who's the report, uh, sorry, Mr. Business Improvement Officer, to give us a rundown on this item. Thank you. The purpose of this draft policy is to inform the community of the role of the Principal Certifier, George River Council and the Building Commission New South Wales in relation to the complaints received regarding development sites, um, as well as provide clear advice on Council's process of handling complaints relating to the management of those development sites. The draft policy for, uh, confirms that the private certifier um, is appointed that when a private certifier is appointed as principal certifier, they are the regulatory authority over the development site and are legally required to fulfil all the responsibilities of the PC of the private principal certifier. However, the draft policy contains 10 definitive scenarios in which the judges of the council will respond to specific complaints when a private certifier private certifier has been appointed the principal certifier. I will note that the 10th scenario was added after the workshop for this policy following Council Lansbury's suggestion and the 10th scenario is where Council will respond when a complainant has attempted to contact the private certifier on at least three occasions in relation to one of the nine listed definitive scenarios and has not received a response. A documentary evidence of the submitted complaints is required um, in, in this particular scenario and that would be forwarding of the email that was submitted to the private certifier um, or the evidence of um, calls that was made. The 10 draft scenarios in this policy exceed local government legislate, legislative obligations and are above and beyond the standard scenarios endorsed by local councils across New South Wales. 
because this council acknowledges the lack of regulation and accountability within the private certification industry, we have commenced a lobbying for change campaign designed to push for greater regulation, co-regulation and enforcement powers for councils within the private certification industry. The campaign focuses on addressing the prevalent concerns identified in the community consultation from 2022, um, but the following focus areas are currently being pursued. First one is the public complaints database to be noted as a component on the New South Wales planning portal. For CDC plans to be publicly available on the New South Wales planning portal, the local government contribution portal control to be made um, to be enforced on the planning portal and for greater regulatory power for councils and the ability to issue fines for the private certifiers for breaches relating to failure um, for the private certifier property owner in issuing pre-notification, pre-construction notification, failure to display appropriate signage with the private certifier contact details on the development site, contravening regulated construction hours and non-compliance for conditions of consent and deviations from CDC plans and approvals. The proposed actions to advance these agend agendas are to capitalise on the pre-established working groups like LG New South Wales with the Office of the Building Commissioner um, and the New South Wales Planning Portal Working Group to present business cases for the changes, all of which we are currently involved in. We will engage industry bodies such as the Association of Australian Certifiers, AAC, for their buy-in as these agendas have numerous benefits to the private certification industry as well as council. And we'll submit, suggest, we'll submit a suggestion paper to the Building Commission New South Wales requesting the required changes for the New South Wales Planning Portal. Thanks, Ms. Hosking. Um, can I call for a mover and seconder for that report, please? I'll move. Councillor Cathras and Councillor Lansbury. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion from the councillors? Uh, can I just make, ask, uh, um, make a comment more than anything else? First of all, I, I think it's an excellent uh, policy. I, I've read right through it and I think you've, probably, you've um, covered a lot of areas which um, really were concerning us. The one that stands out to me more than anything else, which I think we can incorporate, is who is the private certifier of the project? And I appreciate that the director's given me this. And who's responsible for keeping the private certifiers um, under control? And who is actually responsible for ensuring that they put a sign on the fence? I've driven past many sites, and the private certifiers just have don't they don't bother anymore because the Department of Fair Trading are not doing their job. And I think that's the situation which we have to actually correct somehow. Um, did you want to say anything to this uh, director? <laughs> or Ms. Hoskins, do you want to make a comment here, or I can? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Catrice. Uh, so, as you're aware, the council we don't have any regulatory power over the certifier. We have regulatory power over the builder but not the certifier. So in cases where they haven't put a sign on it, um, and it is creating significant issue in the community, yes, we can probably follow it up with the certifier, but that's not one of the 10 points we have put on here. Um, I guess that what we can do is follow it up with, uh, and I guess that's what part two of our program is, that if the sign isn't on the certifier, this is something the council should be able to find the certifier for. Yeah, but at the moment, we cannot do that. That is a fair trading issue. Low down on their pecking order, those types of things. But uh, I think if we, but it's an important issue. So if we can get to this next stage, uh, maybe we education might be a part of this program as well. Uh, but it, it's. The commission is pretty clear that this that the commission is the regulatory body for certifiers, not council. But we can try a co-regulation approach. Well, the only other thing that I would suggest, because I've looked at the um, maximum penalties, um, they're fifty-five for not having a sign. This is specifically for not having a sign. Mm -hmm. It's section seventy-five of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Development Certification of Fire Safety regulation 2020 
55 up to 35 penalty units not having a sign that's about that it translates to six thousand and fifty dollars and i think because the department of fair trading is not doing their job going around at least i mean maybe we could bring them and say there are a number of sites here you better go and do do your rounds um the other thing i was thinking of doing i think that we could look at is um and if you've got all the slopping that you like to do, which I think is really good, um, the section 29, it says CDC plans to be publicly available on the New South Wales um, planning portal and then local government contribution portal control. Um, maybe we can lobby them to actually, as soon as they submit the construction certificate to the portal, they must submit also the name of the private certifier, the name, address, and contact number. They should be doing that just on the portal. I think our community is finding it very difficult to make contact with these private certifiers. Um, and now they've got, they've, now they've, they've decided to go underground by not putting their sign up on the fence. And I could say, I would say that the number of times that I've just driven around and watched all this construction going on, and I'm sort of looking for the private certifier sign, it's not there. The only thing they put there is the builder sign or the company sign, and I think that's 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 happening more because no one's picking them up on picking them up on it, and the rest of it is excellent. Thank you. I think three would share the points you've raised, Councillor Catrus, are, uh, are worth for us pursuing. Um, Ms Hoskins has taken on the role of trying to get the portal made exactly as you say, more user friendly for, for residents, um, especially residents that have got building activity going on around them. Um, there is also, I have another staff member who is on the portal advisory group or re review group. Uh, they, she's taking these matters as well to them, but uh, sometimes it falls on deaf ears, but we will keep moving on it. Thanks, Mr. Bishop. Um, do any other councillors have questions? Councillor Jefferson. Um, yeah, so I didn't realise that we can't, the council can't go finding them for not having sign. Through you, Mr. Chair, Councillor Jamison, we don't have any regulatory power over the certifier, the builder we do. So when we went round and looked at all the water issues and um, the other sediments, and so we, we were finding just the builder. That is correct. Yeah. So the campaign here is about asking for co-regulation on certain things, and this the signage would be one of those things which the commission's not going to get in, want to get involved in it, but it's a key issue for the community and a key. It's a legislative requirement. That might be something that the Commission allows us to find the certified for. Thanks, Director. Any other questions from the Council? Council Lansbury. Uh, it wasn't actually a question. I was just going to speak to it, if that's okay. Um, personally, I just wanted to thank Ms Bishop and Ms Hoskins and your staff for putting together this policy. This has been a long time coming. Um, this council has formed in trying to get reform in private certification. We've been moving resolutions and writing to ministers and premiers since um, 2018, by my reckoning and uh, you know, trying to get them to implement the Lambert Review and just actually make private certifiers accountable to the communities that they operate in, which they haven't been to date, as we know. And I've been quoted as saying they're the tool of the devil. They're one of the tools of the devil. Um, I think the CDCs are, are another one as well. It's one of the major complaints that we would receive as councillors is developments that are overseen by private certifiers and their lack of response. And um, it's very difficult to, if you live next door to something, it's very difficult to get action on it. And, you know, the number of times we've had conversations, or I know I've had conversations over the years with um, council officers such as Andrew Spooner and others as to what can be done about it. And, and perhaps it's one of those things of more than one way to skin a cat until we can get legislative change and action from the government, which I think the current government is more likely to be more responsive to that than the previous government. 
having this policy, which from as the report indicates, it's the first one in New South Wales to really go down that road, which I think is a wonderful thing. You know, if, if there may be um, some of the things that Councillor Catch has raised may need to be amended um, once it goes out on exhibition, there'll be other things that are always raised that we've not quite thought of, but um, I think it's a great step forward to actually getting some control over this and having a building commissioner as well in place who is supportive of it. Um, we're in a very good spot, so well done. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Lansbury. Any, any other councillors with any questions or comments? Councillor Wang. Uh, yes, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, for, to the director. So for paragraph 18, um, yeah, for mentioned the point the 6, 7, 8, 19 are um, presented across the New South Wales local government. Um, so my question is, um, do we need, uh, need the, what's the process to get this uh, approved? Do we need to go through the state to get it approved for those points? Through you, Mr. Chair and Councillor Wang. Oh, sorry. Through you, uh, Mr. Chair and Councillor Wang. Uh, the approach would be, as the as the recommendation says, that it's this is a council document, so we would follow the normal process that the document is placed on exhibition. We will do, as Rebecca has indicated, sorry, Ms. Hosking has indicated, we will do some targeted consultation while it is on exhibition take submissions into account and it will come back to you for consideration and adoption. If uh, we get it adopted, we will then take this policy uh, to the Commission and indicate to them that they might wish to use it as uh, a, a pilot project or use it as that other councils may wish to use in relation to uh, clarification of the roles of when uh, a council will go out on site to private certify. So we will then, once it is endorsed and adopted, we will then uh, spread the word around. While it's on exhibition, we will also probably send it in to the, Depart to the Department of Fair Trading, provide them with a copy of it as well, as well as send it to SS Rock and get their views on it too. So no, the answer is no, it doesn't need state government endorsement. It just is adopted by council. Okay, so so I just want to make sure the, the again, Mr. Chair, the jurisdiction is clear. So do we have this power without the state explicitly uh, so approved? What the policy has been written in accordance with current legislation. Okay, so yes, we do. What <coughs> If you look in the report, which is from paragraph 25, that is talking about the next steps we might take, which would require some changes to legislation, which I've just raised for, with Councillor Jamison, is that co-regulation of certifiers. We would be asking for the legislation to be amended to allow us to have a co-regulatory role with certifiers. As Ms Hosking has mentioned too, we would be looking at trying to improve the function of the portal. But they're not, we would have to, we're lobbying for change to do that. But that is the next step. Okay, thank you. That answers my question. I also like to echo uh, Catherine Lansby's uh, message. Mm -hmm. It's a great document. And even the public uh, exhibition, I think it would uh, uh, receive very positive feedback from the community. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Wang. Anybody else like to make a comment or have a question? All right, thanks. Um, I'd just like to say, I'd like to thank the director, her managers and staff for compiling this excellent document. I'd like to acknowledge also the efforts of Councillor Jamison, who raised this issue at Council two years ago and who brought a related motion to last year's LG New South Wales Conference. Uh, which was that LG New South Wales urges the New South Wales government to take steps to improve private certification processes, which was passed immediately and without debate. Okay, that's a lot to say on that. Um, in that case, um, I'll, I'll put this motion to a vote. If we can go in the room, please, Mr. Kinley. No vote, please, Madam Deputy Mayor. Four. Mr. Chair. Four. Councillor Amby Haperhan. Four. Councillor Jamison. Four. Councillor Catrus. Councillor Lansbury. Four. Councillor Wayne. Four. It's unanimous. Thank you. I declare that motion carried. Um, there being no other business on the agenda, I declare this meeting closed at 7.20pm. Thank you.